Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So good to see you again for yet another New York City Gallery Tour. This time we will be checking out Soho and Tribeca to see what's on show. Before we begin, just another friendly request. If you would like to like this video at any point along the way, if you see any artist, galleries, or artwork that you particularly like, that will help people find the artists, the galleries, and this channel for more viewership. So we'd appreciate it. Just a little thumbs up, quick click, helps out a tremendous amount. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, of course, that subscribe button is right there. You know what to do, just click. I am a huge, huge fan of the exhibitions on in this episode. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Just a few blocks away from me, we're here at the whole gallery in Tribeca. Pedro Pedro is an LA-based artist. The imagery in this show is predominantly fruit and flowers with several less fragrant subjects in the work as well. Let's start off by talking about the gallery space overall. You'll notice wall-to-wall -wall faux wood paneling covering the entire gallery. That is because Pedro paints wood grain in his paintings and they wanted to play off of that theme, kind of a vintage 70s theme. And to complement the work even further, and this is true, the gallery had planned to do wall-to-wall -wall shag carpeting to play into that 70s theme. But it's summertime and they started to overheat and they said, you know, we're probably doing the most right now. We should just, you know, call it good enough. And I think it looks great. These are painted on unprimed linen, which means the paint soaks into the fibers rather than sitting on top of the plastic gesso layer. That's why these paintings have such a soft edged, luminous glowing appearance to them. But this is not without labor because in order to do that, to produce that kind of color effect, the artist Pedro has to put several layers of paint on each surface just to get that quality. But it ain't all strawberries and daisies here, oh no. Pedro juxtaposes the images of those floral elements with somewhat less appetizing images as well. Such undesirable objects you can spot in these works include toenail clippers, a bony roasted chicken, a thermometer, Kleenex, I assume it's an unused Kleenex, I, I don't know, a hairbrush, cigarette, oxycodone, and a slab of bologna. The sweet and the sour is the vibe of this show. Pedro is highlighting that we must savor both the highs and the lows to have a fully meaningful lived experience. The fully explored and authentic life includes the beautiful and the grotesque, the sacred and the profane. Now we make our way north towards Soho where we stop at the Peter Freeman Gallery. Hey, Alex. Alex, hey. Alex, hey is on exhibition at Peter Freeman with a retrospective, 1963 to 2020. The gallery actually planned to put the show on in April 2020 to celebrate the artist's 90th birthday, but they had to reschedule because some unexplained disruption caused a delay and they had to reschedule it for now. So I don't know. I can't imagine what in April of 2020 would have caused this gallery to reschedule the show. What could any of us have been doing in April 2020? I don't know. But we have the show now. And Alex has been an established artist for several decades. He's now 90 glorious years old, as I said, and he is thriving. His works feature 2D and 3D renderings of things he likes. These things that he likes included paper bags and those iconic handwritten receipts from the cash only restaurants around New York City. They somehow look even cooler when they're sized at monumental proportions. Back in 2002, Alex decided to no longer pursue art making for the gallery exhibition scene, but rather to create art from the everyday for the sake of making art. Some of the works he's made since then are represented here in the show, such as those boards on the floor that come from the days out west in Arizona working on a barn. 
They're in a gallery context here, but I imagine Alex doesn't mind. Ah, God. Love good architecture. I love a good facade with some nice trim on it, you know? Give me a, a little ornamentation on my, my building, something to look at. And for the buildings that are steel and glass, it gives them something nice to reflect, to reflect upon. You get what I'm saying? God, these sunny Soho days. New York City is hotter than fish grease out here today. My goodness. Yeah. But we still gallery hop. For you, I gallery hop. Bring you with me, we do this together. Where is Jeffrey? Next, we head down to the Jeffrey Deitch Gallery where we see Dominique Fung on exhibition. Now, let me say, if you are a female identifying individual, this show might be for you. If you are a male, identifying folk. Uh, you really take it on the chin in this one. Hot takes. It's important that you pay attention here. Do. Do pay attention. Dominique's work is about the personification of objects and the objectification of persons, you feel me? Specifically talking about the fetishizing of Asian women. <clears throat> talking about all the creeptastic men out there who have a little Asian persuasion going on. You know who you are. Dominique is not here for it. The bird cages are inspired by a tradition in Hong Kong parks, taking songbirds for walks. Fung's work is best seen through the lens of Asian American critical feminism, a quote from the press release. She is interested in theorist Anne and Lin Chang's analysis of the figuration of a yellow woman, regularly sexualized, spectacularized, rendered synthetic and ornamental, end quote. Said another way, it sucks that Asian women are often objects of desire in media and society rather than respected as human beings. Fung's works are an assemblage of a lot of things, both theoretical and concrete. These latest works are drawn from themes from art history and ancestral memories. The ceramic sculptures she made herself, and they're inspired by Chinese frescoes taken from their homeland to be put into the Met Museum. And who took the frescoes from China? Men, obviously. Obviously. Dominique's work is academically rigorous and researched without being overly didactic. These works have their own spirit force to them, just beyond the scholastic. I'm into it, and just to put an ever finer point on this, men suck. Jeffrey Deitch, so nice we had to see it twice. We are going down to the second location of the Jeffrey Deitch Gallery. The Greek translation of choreography is dance writing. I bet you didn't know that. But Kentura Davis knows that. She's an artist working between LA and Accra in Ghana. This body of work explores the concept of us humans as actors, performers, dancers in the movement of society. Kentura is interested in how humans move toward or away from freedom using language. Do we conform to social norms or resist or rebel? Our language tells the story. These works are very large and masterfully rendered. What you are looking at here is not merely sheets of paper that the artist drew upon, nay. The original debates that were chronicled during the passing of the 13th Amendment to the US Constitution are debossed or impressed upon each sheet of paper you see here, I kid you not. In these, you can read the transcripts from the legislatures, white men, who made the case for and against other people being considered free or rather considered property. And considered further, the only exception made to someone being free is if they were considered a criminal. And then you look at our current prison industrial system today, 
Well, you get the picture. These works are large and captivating, and I really appreciate Kentura's choice to limit her range of medium to just a black and white color palette. It really lets the words shine through more. This is a great demonstration of her strength and her acumen and sensibility as an artist. We head now to Denny Demin Gallery where Wendy White is on show. Wendy has some faux plywood on display and it looks kind of like Pedro's, but nay, she painted these bad boys. Yes, this is paint on canvas. Do not let thine eyes fool you. I say bad boys because the title of the show is Mark and Phil. We can assume that Mark and Phil are archetypal hetero, cis, assumably white males. Seems to be the theme of our show thus far today. Wendy's wood panel paintings are reminiscent of wood that we saw on shop windows during the protest of 2020 summer and the faux wood paneling of masculine spaces like garages, man caves, basements, auto body shops, Pedro Pedro's exhibition. I've seen a few of these in my day. Mark and Phil can also be thought of as Mark and Phil, F-I-L-L, -L, as in to Mark and Phil are wood panels with modern hieroglyphics of self-expression, calling out for acceptance and to be recognized. This is a playful yet painful quality to the work that feels like we need more vulnerability and less defensiveness if we want to break down the walls of patriarchy. Can I get an amen? Now we head into Bartolome Gallery where we see Deborah Remington. What can I say about this artist? Deborah was a straight up boss. These paintings are from her five decade career. She was born in 1930. Her paintings of abstract forms, absent of brush strokes, were inspired by her abex influences and her short stint in Japan, observing imagery there. Throughout her life, she battled cancer, but this did not slow her down from producing paintings as often as possible. Deborah rejected the gallery scene at the time because it often undermined female artists, because a lot of men can be very intimidated by women or insecure and too self-important to think beyond themselves. I swear this was not the intended theme of today's show, but we're here now, so we're talking about it. So she would often sell paintings directly from her studio to clients. Deborah was a champion all the way until her death in 2010. This work I love because they are the epitome of a painter's painting. Upstairs, we have a five person group show. Sasha Bronick, Jules Gimbrane, Brooke Hsu, Piero Golia, and Anika Yi. The theme of the show is titled after a series by Jules Gambroni, Traps and Transmutations. The series involved sounds interacting with various materials and the effects it had on those materials. There's a lot going on here and I enjoyed getting a sampling of each artist's work. Check out the show notes below to get a link to the exhibition images and information about each artist. Hey, real quick, if you are a video gamer, 
or you love Avatar World, you are about to lose your goddamn mind in Jane Lombard. Liu Yang is a digital artist out of Shanghai. This work represents a cultural collision. The artist was born in the 1980s and grew up with the global economy and technology booming. The exhibition suggests that as technology advances, religions must reimagine and repackage themselves. Liu has created this avatar to navigate a sort of post-human sci-fi scape. The series does a serious mashup of Buddhist reincarnation ideology and live animation. <laughs> the protagonist, Doku, is named after the phrase Dokusho Dokushi, which translates to we are born alone, we die alone. Damn, that's depressing. <laughs> Somewhat conversely, the other part of the title of the show is Digital Alaya, which is a reference to an idea of surplus of consciousness that is the foundation for all mental, spiritual, and physical wellness. And you feel that. Doku appears in six 3D worlds in this show, representing the six realms of rebirth in a Buddhist concept of reincarnation. In terms of spiritual exaltation, I could not be more over the moon for this show. This is an awakening like none other. It's like a figurative sucker punch to the existential gut. This is doing it for me on every level. Speaking of levels, downstairs in the gallery is a mini documentary about the making of the work. Liu Yang bringing the heat through dance and celebration of life. Oshi Mataku is the tattoo artist in that documentary video. The designs are beautiful. So, highly recommend. If you're a full body tattoo design kind of person, Oshi Mataku, that's your go-to right there. Heading to Postmasters now, which is my favorite gallery in the Tribeca area because it's the one closest to me. Feels like home whenever I go in there. It's got great exhibitions, great, great space. Good community on opening nights. I'm a big fan and it's been there for many, many years. In terms of medium, the show by Kenny Duncan is a multi-pronger. Photography, video, sculpture, installation, performance. The objects hold a heavy weight to them, but the spirit of the show is exuberance and uplift. It's a weirdly playful show because it imagines a world ahead of us in which everyone accepts themselves and also others. A much more accepting society, if you will. Kenny is a Paris-based artist and this is his first US solo show. This work does approach social identity theory through the lens of blackness, yes indeed, and quite intimately so with videos of Kenny's ash cheeks bouncing back and forth and some of his old washcloths displayed in frames. But there is much more here than the exploration of an artist's racial identity. There seems to be a universal nature to the body of work. Kenny was born and raised in Guadalupe, an island in the French West Indies. He's engaging with writings by the philosopher Edouard Glissant, who established ideas around the identity through multiple contexts, such as Kenny's Caribbean and French influences. This show feels philosophical and poetic. There is both visual language and actual language. There are billboards advertising black hair care products in this show a nugget on blackness and beauty for the viewer to consider. The show is directly and in kind of a multifaceted approach suggesting that identity is a mix of everything. It is one's culture, heritage, history, geography, beliefs, their social groups, their economics. 
It is nearly impossible to compartmentalize the vastly beautiful cocktail of one's social identities. I love that Kenny embraces his own body in these works as the building block for understanding personhood. His physical form acts as a vehicle or a tool for representing his spiritual presence. When I see multimedia work done well like this, I am always so grateful and appreciative and inspired and uplifted. And Kenny really pulled it off here. An excellent first solo show in the US via Postmasters. Hey friends, thanks for coming along on yet another gallery tour. I appreciate your company. I hope you had as much fun as I did. The exhibitions in Soho and Tribeca right now are dynamite, out of sight, top flight. I hope you liked it. And if you did, that thumbs up button is right down there. Helps people find the channel, helps people build momentum around this community of art goers like you and me. If you want to see more videos like these, there's a cute little red subscribe button down there that you can just click on and then you'll get notices whenever these videos are out you'll get to see more of these tours and come along with me if you are a dude who made it through this episode i know it was a tough one if you haven't heard some of these themes before that popped up in the works today this one might have been a struggle but i say kudos to you for making it this far and now we've got a lot of work to do patriarchy toxic masculinity these are the forces of destruction in our modern world. How are we going to fix it? If you have some ideas for how to combat toxic masculinity, patriarchy, and put more equality, more equity, more feminism into the world today, there's comments down below. I'm looking for some really good suggestions. That concludes our episode for today. Until next time, you know what to do. Do what you always do. Stay creative.